Um, it just does well against Underlord and Storm and Io in the mid game. So I reckon they're gonna be pretty happy with it. It does leave you kind of open to some like counter picks. Because now if Hydra picks up something Ten like a Morphling or a Void, they're gonna be in a really good position. Does the the Morphlin fit into this lineup? You know, do you think because I mean you, you do still have to worry about I guess the the Fiends group coming out. Um and the extra magic damage that comes out for Keeper of Light as well, is that a hero that you'd think Hydra... Because we, we have seen... Um, it, it pops up every so often, you know, we, we've Bad seen it throughout seconds. the event. Um, do you... Like I said, do you, is it a good lineup? Not just up against the Juggernaut, but does that fit in well with Hydra's lineup? I think so, yeah. Um, Morphling generally isn't in the best spot right now. Okay. Um... But against like Ember Spirit and Jug, it looks absolutely great. Because you have a really easy way of getting out of the Omni, you don't really care about the spin, and stealing Ember in a fight is sick. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see if the, they want to uh, bring that hero into it, because I mean, there is still a ban, one move. They, they do still have that final ban. And. Look at it now, so one move, the Sam King's gone, the Pangolier's gone, TK that we've seen, the Brewmaster, you know, these the, the Doom Dragonite Mars. What's left in the off lane here? Oh, good question. Radiance ban. I guess they could go for Slardar. That's a decent option. <laughs> there really isn't a lot left, is there? <laughs> No, I'm just I trying to run through myself, yeah. Ten seconds to go. Like, LC's not Five in a good seconds. place at the minute, so you probably don't want to go for that. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, the list is very, very short indeed. Yeah. Just trying to think. Um, the something that goes well with the, the team as well that would you know what completely off the wall go for a wind ranger anytime anyone goes to go try and get out with fiends gate you just throw your shackles yeah, instant yeah. two-man shackle <laughs> oh man that sounds awful it, it sounds terrible it's truly truly <laughs> Yeah, uh, they could go for X. X is decent. Yeah. I don't think it's the best X game, but eh, I've seen worse. What about the Night Stalker? Is the Night Stalker out of favor now? Is that not a hero that you see picked up a whole lot? Ooh. Night Stalker looks pretty okay. It's nice against Storm and Io. Mm. The one thing that would worry me slightly um, is going to be the lack of a reliable disable. Like, if you have a Night Stalker and the enemy gets BKBs, what are you gonna do? Yeah. I'll answer it. It's nothing. There is nothing <laughs> you can do. <laughs> and Hydra goes for the Wraith King. Interesting. It's not Ten something that I would have necessarily... Uh, I would have thought of. Because um, there are no, like, huge ultis on one move that are gonna be targeting a Wraith King. Mm -hmm. Like... No one is going to want to grip or omni slash a Wraith King. Yeah. Um, I suppose it's just when you've got a lot of control coming out from Hydra. And like say with the the Pit of Malice, the Storm Spirit with the, the Vortex back, Snapfire, being able to use the, the little Shredder to, to get the Minus Armor. You know, the Wraith King looks really good on just walking up into the, the heroes that are stuck to the floor with the Minus Armor. Speaking about Minus Armor, yeah, the Slider does come out. So, you know, just be able to walk up and right-click, it might just be that Hydra feel that they can win the games that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think Slider is a good option here. Really helps with focusing down key targets quickly. Like, if you do get some kind of stun on the Storm Spirit or the jump on the IO, Having that uh, corrosive haze on them is such a big deal. Well, we are going to be able to get ourselves into this first game. And 
looking at these drafts, any preferences, any uh, any predictions you think from these two teams? Mm, it's going to be Storm against Ember, which is pretty even. Then we're going to have an Underloid Snapfire lane against Jug Bane, I guess. And then Io Wraith King Five against seconds. Slider Kotal. I think it's really even. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's honestly 50-50, so no big preference. Okay. So it's just going to come Cop-out down... answer, weak, I know. But... Yeah. It's a cop-out. We're, we're, we're used to it by now. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So what do you think? I think that I'm not good enough to predict pro games and that nobody should ever... It doesn't ever... matter, man. Just be confident. <laughs> No, I think Storm's in a really good place at the minute. You know, one of the strongest heroes in the patch. That even if the Ember Spirit and the the lane from the Ember Spirit, the Storm Spirit, you know, it's even coming into that late game. I think, especially once the um, Aghanim Scepter comes out for the Storm as well, you know, that hero is going to have a massive impact, and it could just be the X factor. Mhm. Mm yeah. It's definitely going to be needed as well because if you look at the Hydra lineup, they don't have a great amount of pickoff potential aside from the storm so he's really gonna need to be on top of his game well let's see getting into this first game how are these two teams gonna do because it is all on the line here the loser will drop down into the lower bracket for a second chance but i mean you want to qualify first time you want to be getting yourself right in there you don't want to be having to rely on the look of the draw in the lower bracket better get ready so let's see what you both teams can do. And it looks like one move. After everybody gets the voice lines out of the system. Yes, we good. There's going to be a, a five-man smoke coming out from one move here. I'm just looking to see anything picked up. So the spin from Juggernaut right off the bat. Nothing for the Amber Spirit here. Bane, no. Slaughter. Okay, so Slaughter, do you go for the, the Crush level one or do you want the Bash level one? Uh, for first blood, you want to have crush. For yeah. laning, probably bash. But it depends on the lane, because in some lanes you can't really reliably get off three hits onto anyone. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see where are they going to go with this. Also, just going to come through all the way from top lane into mid, and they've not seen anybody. So, does the ward go down? It does. Just to spot out in case there's any rotations from the side of Hydra into the river. But Hydra are just playing this really safe. They're going to go for now maybe moving out. Because, I mean, if they stayed here, they'd only be able to get... Uh, maybe not, because the, the Underlord as well as Koval, they are moving through to get this Radiant-sided rune. So maybe it is going to be a two for two. Maybe not, because there might be a Nightmare in the mid-river. It's Askold. He does take... Some damage coming through. So, yeah, Sayushi's going to start off with the Illuminate as well. So, the damage coming through from that, it was enough to take a, a decent chunk away from the Storm Spirit. And Askold, he's going to have to go for that Tango straight away. I think it was handed over. was handed over by the Snap by, but it's still a decent chunk of damage. Mm -hmm. Poor Askold. Luckily, he's pretty close to his bottle already. Just needs, like, uh, one creep wave worth of CS. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see if Maljul can get any denies here. It looks like Askold is just cleaning it up. Yeah, it's not going to be too far. Just what's that? Another creep. By the time the the yeah the gold takes up, just one more creep. It's actually going to be uh, the Underlord plus Io as opposed to Underlord plus Snapfire. Okay. I actually quite like this because I think that with an Io supporting him, he can actually just click through the the spin. Yeah. And he, look at this as well. He started himself off with... What's on the curry? Nothing's on the curry. He started himself off with uh, three gauntlets of strength. So he is just going full tank in this lane. I assume it's going to be the same. A Bracer and a Soul Ring coming out for this hero. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just uh, hitting people. Yeah, and th Ooh. that's what the off lane matter is, isn't it? And you're right. You know, No, he's, he, he's going to take a lot of damage, but... It's not enough to take him down on Koval. He can just pop a Tango. He's going to get the extra regen from his own Tangos if he wants to use one as well. And in about well, 10 15 seconds, he'd be back to full health. So, really not fussed about that spin at level 1. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the level 2 timing is always a little bit scary, but yeah, as you mentioned, he's just way too chunky. He is a big boy at the minute in this lane, and in fact, so he's going to go for the, it looks like the power treads to start, and is this just to try and outmove the spin, even though, you know, if he's at full health, it looks like he's surviving, um, it just outruns the spin, he can move away, you know, try and get out of range of the Bane and the Nightmare as well. Um, or is yeah. that just, yeah. That is one explanation. Also, just power threats in terms of role, like fighting value is pretty much up there. Okay. Like, 10 strength and 25 attack speed is pretty good for just uh, 1500 gold. Well, he's going to miss one of the last hits, but what's he got on the courier coming out? It's going to be the Gloves of Haste, so extra attack. Just to, uh, to be able to swing. He likes using that Firestorm here as well in the lane, just to make sure he gets these last hits off. And so with this lane, he can get the last hit on the range creep though. With this lane, do you want to be keeping the pressure on the Juggernaut? You know, do you want to be keeping this creep wave underneath the tier 1 tower for the side of one move? Or, you know, what is it? What is the plan? Because he's using that Firestorm an awful lot. Just to, is it just to keep the Juggernaut away from the creeps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going to be able to pull it back too much. So, it doesn't really matter too much for this lane because, like, they're the stronger heroes in this lane. Yeah. So, no one is going to be able to push them back anyway. So, it doesn't matter where they are, they're going to be completely fine. Like, yeah. it's only a bit riskier once uh, the Ember hits level 6. Yeah. Ooh, do they want to go here? Look at this, a nightmare. It's going to come out. Koval, though, he's got the spin. Does he have the tether? Two seconds. He's looking for that big gap, maybe to get himself away. He will be able to. He still goes down. Pants him. Gets it well, with the brain sap to finish the job. Really nice in place. Yeah. I wonder if they, like, calculated the tether cooldown or if it was just one of those subconscious feelings where you feel like you can go. Yeah. And, well, whichever way it was, it really got it right so it's gonna be tp in so yeah this is just gonna be koval finishing um the support duty on the respawn on tp in into the mid lane and refilling the bottle so we know now on the bottom lane there's gonna be a little bit of time without that io it's gonna take him a little bit to wander over and you can just see bane he's taking the opportunity to pull through without the interrupt coming through from the io and meanwhile on the top lane because we've not really spoke about this, but Sayush, he's just moved himself back out of range. The crush comes out, but what's Kick doing? Is he waiting to hang around? Maybe because he's going to go for the Scatter Blast as well as the Cookie, and Sayush just moves himself back to the Tier 1. Can he get this, though? Does he want to go for the Cookie Kicks? Doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, so how did this lane play with Afterlife as well as Sayush in the off lane? How strong is that up against the, the lane of the um, Wraith King and the Snap by, you know, is there any advantage in this? Yeah, it's not really. I think there is a bit more kill potential for a high dress lane. Mm. Because they have the double stun, of course. But as far as just general day-to-day -day laning life, it's really even. Because Afterlife can run in and get, like, bashes. Yeah. Which is really nice for lane control, but Rari can do the same thing with Moetal Strikes. So they just trade in that way. Also, Afterlife, for some ungodly reason, put two points in Crush. Uh, Does he want to max it? I guess he's with a Coddle, so it's not as ungodly. I'm just being dramatic. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's what we're here for. I suppose it goes well when you've got the, the Solar Bites Ooh, come he's out. he's alone. No Mango on Rari, though. Oh, no. Yeah, didn't have any stick charges there either. I mean, Afterlife is going to come back in. He's got the Tango out to his regen, but it's going to be the wraparound here from Kicked. He's going to have that Scatter Blast. The cookie comes up in three seconds as well. Wraith Fire Blast is available. If they can find the vision, Afterlife trying to eat himself through the trees now. The Crush comes up. Pantomime's going to get the kill onto Asgold in the mid lane, but it looks like they're going to be able to go into Afterlife here. One more right click. Is it going to be enough? The cookie's going to be out of range, though, and the chase is on, I think, Afterlife with the sprint. He's going to be a little bit faster. 70 health he gets out with the... And if that cookie was on range, that would have been the death, but Kicked just couldn't get it off. Yeah, awkward. I thought he was gonna be dead for sure when he got stuck in the trees. Sometimes miracles happen. Well. Underlord in the bottom lane. Oh, yeah. Nightmare's gonna be there. The spin is gonna try Ooh, for the TP. Nice. Is it gonna be in time? <gasps> 50 ish health he got out with the. 
Not even close. <laughs> One hundred percent calculated. So, Pantomim behind the trees is clearing out. It looks like he was looking for the arrow. The risk of the rotation down, it looks like from Asko, level 6. So, he's going to have them point into the vortex. That point into the ball lightning as well. If you want to try and make a move, Knight. Only level 5. It looks like they are going to go for the dive, but it looks like they're going to be going on to Pantomim now. The vortex does come out. Is there going to be enough damage to take him down? Asko will get that kill. Okay, so, pulls that one out of the back. He's even going to be able to find the side stack here though as well, that was full of uh, the little skeletons. So some extra gold coming through from Asgold, and you can see that's going to take him to the top of the, the last hit chart oh. though. And now Perry's Trinket dropping for his team as well. That's some good shit. Does he take that in terms of neutrals? You know, what is it that... Do I'm here in the nightmare. Is there going to be any follow up onto this though? The Juggernaut is rotating over. Melodule's close as well. The Tether. No, he's going to be stopped in this track. The Steering Chains comes out. Really well worked though to get that kill onto the IO. Yeah, nice rotation by Melodule. Of course, Ember is definitely one of his signature heroes. Hmm. And what is it that. Ember wants to build into here, you know, because we do see uh, Maelstrom's coming out, or is it um, just going to be the straight Ags that we've seen a couple of times? Yeah, what is it that the Ember Spirit wants? Oh, come back to that in a second, because there is going to be the Raid Fire Blast Afterlife, though. He does get it off the course. Ferrari, it's going to be the Slayer Fist into the Searing Chains. Do they have enough to take him down? The Cookie comes out, it's going to be this done. One more right click. No, he cancels it! Mid-swing! And Afterlife survives. The Wraith King will go down. He didn't have the point into the Reincarnation, because... It's not something you take as a Wraith King that early on. And Melodule's going to be able to get another good couple of kills out of that. That was a really nicely timed DD run. Well played by Melodule. Now Skull's going to see Melodule. Melodule does he want to give himself away. The run will be the Melodule does he jump though. No? Okay. Just a safety remnant. Yeah, the TP in as well. So, yeah, what is it that Melodule wants to pick up item-wise, do you think? Definitely a BKB, but I think he's going to get a Maelstrom yeah, first. Yep, mm -hmm. and he puts it into his quick buy. Okay, so... There's going to be a four staff queued up for Bane as well, which is going to be quite nice. Um, let's take a look top, because Asgold was the one to go for the wraparound, and maybe this time... Finally send Afterlife to the Afterlife. Nope, are they backing up? No don't see him. They go I thought for a moment they were going to go into Roche, but then I remembered that Stada was on the other team. <laughs> Slight Fist comes out. Oh, so much damage. Just look at How that, is yeah. that balanced? And at the minute, 5 and 1. 10 minutes in here for one move. They are taking that advantage of the Storm Spray. He's not hit that. Uh, he's, he's already got himself three Null Talismans, but he's got to wait for that 25 minute mark for them to be super effective. So, Hydra here just biding the time for the next 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Man, as cold is buying an Orchid. Yikes. Not a fan? No. Because Jug is probably gonna be buying a Manta and Ember Spirit, like we spoke about, is gonna get a BKB at some point. So. That means that you have like a, I don't know, three minute timing window, maybe like five minutes where you can actually kill the Ember. Do you use and it on the course, It's going to be useful against supports, but top towers, eh. just it just leaves you so weak against enemy cores. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just thinking it, it would be nice um, because it means you can commit the Vortex on someone else. Speaking of a Vortex, it's going to be a long TP in, but Melodule is going to be dragged back. Is there going to be any follow-up from this? Is he going to be able to get the Nightmare onto the Underlord? Was that follow-up now as well? As the Searing Chains, you were off. Phantom is going to walk himself into an Electric Remnant. It looks like they might be able to. The Feast Room comes out onto the, the Storm Spirit, but is this going to be enough to get this kill? Smiling Night Road takes in as well. Phantom will go down. Ashgold, he might just try and jump himself out with the Ball Lightning. And it looks like ICQ might go down instead. In fact, Melodule gets himself the double. Can he get any more out of this? He's going to be kicked. Just moves himself away. Three kills go in the way of one move here now as well. It's going to be a big dive in. They get him with the Searing Chains. It looks like they're going to be able to clean this rope. Sayush takes it though with the Illuminate damage. 
So yeah. Really nice start for one move, and at the same time, Jug is just Dive doing Jug tower. things and farming creeps. You know Almost has a maelstrom for himself, just like the Ember Spirit. Although he is a little bit closer. And so, what can Hydra do here to try and just take back a little? We're only 12 minutes in, so the game is far from over, but. You know, do they just need to buy space for the Wraith King? Because the Wraith King looks like it's going to be the armor that's coming out. And then, um, what is it that Rari wants to go in for? In fact, speaking about going in, did they go in for ICQ? No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, so what is it that the Wraith King actually wants to do um, in this game in terms of items? I think it's just going to be the basic build where you get Imlet and then a Blink and then a Deso. Hmm. And then you start one-shotting supports. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Afterlife PD is going to be dope here. Rari's going to be coming in with his Wraith King army. He's going to be able to get the Wraith Fireball stuff as well. But the Nightmare might be able to delay a little bit longer here. Pantomime, is there going to be any more rotations in? Afterlife, can he get himself away from this? Ashgold, he wants that kill. He's going to be able to claim that kill. And the Vortex comes up in 8 seconds. There is going to be a hit of Mars down. They're going to be able to clean up Pantomime. But what else can he get out of this? It looks like the Emperor already dove himself away. Back into the mid lane from that Fiend's Gate. Slight of fist, soon change comes out. Underlord isn't the healthiest. There's even going to be a spirit vessel here as well coming through onto him. And Underlord, he looks like he's going to go down. The double remnant flies through, and Melody will get himself another couple of kills. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure why he committed to that gate. I feel like he underestimated uh, the Ember's damage a little bit. Mm. Yeah, and even well, even Saish coming through with the, the spirit vessel, the blind and light. So that's a lot of damage. You've got the Solar Bind as well to stack up the damage. You get the Searing Chains off onto the Snapfire and Snapfire with the Cookie. Oh, do they want to go any further with this? Where's that regen? They've not really got anything. It's Meldul again. He's everywhere with these Sleight of Fist Searing Chains. And Ashgold is trying to get a little bit of farming. He's going to be able to claim that one and just immediately ball lightning it's out to safety. And he's, he's looking at the clock going, just 12 more minutes, just just 11 more minutes, and then I'm going to hit full potential. I'm going to hit my peak power. Meanwhile, Meljul, he is looking incredibly strong. He's only going to be about, what, 200 gold away from picking up that Maelstrom, so that's going to be... Uh, uh, it, he doesn't need to slow down either, right? He can just continue getting this rotation because he's just looks so mobile and so quick around for the ganks. You know, how, how do you deal with this hero? I have no idea. I guess the the root of Atos is gonna help. Mm. Once a BKB gets out, there is no answer. Well, let's see. I mean, Wraith King, how's he doing? Net worth wise, sitting fourth. He's not too far behind. He's finding the ancients as well. Obviously, with the the little skeleton army he's got, he can move around and farm camps quite quickly. But while this is going on, the Juggernaut. He's looking to push down towers, they're looking to take fights, the back line's going to be the jumping, but the crush not going to be on the mark because Asgold with the quick fingers. And a little bit of forewarning here with the uh, the ward right next to the outpost. Mm -hmm. I really like that one move is playing in the dire jungle now. It means that they have a lot of control over Roche. If they see too many heroes for them, they can just move in and take it in like 20 seconds. Mm. It's just the power of Slidei. Ideally, they want to have this tier 1 first, though. What is that? Blink! ICQ, can he get himself away? The Pit Mask comes out, but that is going to be a really nice ultimate by Smiley Knight. Can he chase any further? Unless they're not able to go. There's going to be the Pickball coming out from the Snapfire, though. Back in the mid lane. They get themselves onto Rari Rari. This time, at last, has the reincarnation. Oh, oh, oh the armor toll and the crush comes out. They're going to be able to pop that reincarnation, and Rari just has to run himself back. Most of the kisses fly through, but they're not going to be falling onto anyone. That's going to be the tier 1 tower in the mid lane going down. That's now 3 minutes, no Wraith King ulti. That is painful. Yeah, and there's even a double damage rune outside the Roche pit, but in the mid lane, it's going to be the Fiend's Gate right behind. They're going to be able to get the Vortex drive back onto the Emperor. Emperor, though, can they get the dive away? He's going to be able to get to one remnant. Is there even going to be more? Because it looks like he does get himself out going towards that BKB, like you say, and that's going to be untouchable there for him. He finds the DD room. He can get away with so much in this game. But the Road of Atos is now up for ICQ. Yeah. So if he can get the Pit of Malice off, that's going to be huge. 1.6 seconds worth of roots. 
Then another two, then another 1.6. Well, we'll see. I mean, like you say though, as soon as that BKB, because he's already got gold for at least one piece, he might go for the, um, the Mithril Hammer first. But, mm -hmm. in fact, they might even find out ICQ. Was that Fiend's Reaper? It's available if they want to try and dive onto this. The Slight Fist comes out. No Searing Chains. But, the Nightmare. Do they want to follow up? Because this is really far behind enemy lines here. This would be a mega commitment on the dive. As the Storm's Red does finish up that Orchid. See what he can do with it. Oh, she's already falling. Yeah, look at this. The DD comes out from Melody. He kept that one bottled. He didn't use it until he knew he wanted to. And... This Roche is going to be so quick. Yeah, you, you combine that though. Was that the level 2? It was the level 2 Corrosive Haze for Pantomim. So that comes down to 15 armor reduction. That's ridiculous. That is pretty powerful. It's an ultimate, so it's supposed to be. But that is, you know, when you just want to rely on those right clicks, that is going to be massive for the Juggernaut. You TP'd out? Yeah, TP'd out. And you can in see this. Room. Go on. I was just going to say, Rari's hiding himself in the trees. He's getting towards that. He's got the armor up. He's getting towards the Desolator as well. But he's just. He doesn't feel like, even though he's not too far up behind on the net worth of the Juggernaut, he just doesn't feel as impactful at all. In fact, Nightmare's going to be there. Do they want to go for the Phoenix Grip as well? No, they don't. They're just going to delay Wraith King's farm. They're just going to just wind him up a little. Yeah, just Nightmare him on cooldown. Yeah, and ICQ. Oh, he's been found here as well, Smiling Knight. He's even going to give him the quick wave as he comes in with the Omni Slash. Gets that kill. The Fiend's Gate comes out. Is anyone going to follow through? Afterlife's going to go through. And what does it drag him? It drags him down to the tier one of the bot if they really want to go for that. It is so tempting to use Fiend's Gates. Every single time one gets dropped, you have heroes that are like, mm. Yeah, and, well, if he knew where that was... On the side of the right, that would have been an optimal move to, to get the pick off, go through the Fiend's Gate as a team, and take down that tier 1 tower. Mm -hmm. But obviously not knowing is, uh, it's half the risk. Yep. You don't want to get team wiped by the fountain 19 <laughs> minutes into the game. Yeah, that wouldn't be great. The dire might want to it would be hilarious, though. Do it for the views. Yeah, exactly. You're already ahead. You know, you can you can afford one five mana wipe. I think so. Yeah, especially to the fountain when no one gets XP. Hmm. They're leading by five K gold. It would have it's been fine. fine. Yeah, fine. As well, the wards do go down here, kicked. Gonna be able to get the D ward. Does he immediately want to D ward this observer ward? Nope. Okay. Right, well, ICQ is playing close. Everybody is pretty close here. You know, they're within touching distance if they need to. If there's any ganks or anything going like that. But, yeah, 13 to 4 at the minute. And this is one move completely in the driver's seat. In fact, they're, they're moving up. Yeah, they still have the edges for two minutes as well. Uh, Mindset Styles out for the Juggernaut. They're going to be able to go onto this tier 2, put some aggression onto that if they want to. It's already down about 900 health. So they can just continue to, to see this one down. And... They are really forcing Hydra to respond. Oh, speaking about Asgold. I didn't want to dive. I don't know if he knew Pantomim was there, to be honest. Maybe just the spidey senses. Yeah. T2 Tower on the top lane does go down. Smiling Knight. Does he use the illusions? He is going to use the Manta style illusions here for the next 17 seconds to push this one in. But ICQ comes back. He's going to be able to drop the Firestorm and clean off these crew waves. Stop the aggression onto the TA3s before it even starts. So, Rari. He's going, going to go for the blink. I assume after the blink, it's just straight into the BKB here for the Wraith King. Mm hmm. Yeah. It never feels good to build BKB on Wraith King, but you kind of have to. Yeah. I mean, it's right-click damage, it's strength as well, so it's not an awful item. Even if it, you know, just what it gives to the Wraith King beyond the magic community, right?
Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I feel like BKB would still get bought if it didn't have any like build up items. Yeah. And I mean, a casual 4,000 gold item with no stats. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the, the magic community in fights is kind of priceless. So, you can look at the stats, you know, everything is a, is a little bit of an extra, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Slado's not too far off his either. Mm -hmm. Slado is gonna have it, Ember is gonna have it, and that's gonna be a, a nice timing for the next Roche fight. We got that Aegis is about to go down, quite literally is about to go down, yeah. There it is. So, oh, top lane, the final ICQ once again. And it looks like even with a pair of miles, can they do anything? The push comes through, ICQ, does he want to try and run away? The multiple kisses, Riz is going to be relocating now as well. Afterlife, he's trying to sprint, but he's not on water. This is not his atmosphere. And it looks like he's going to be able to get the kill to turn that one around. Meanwhile, Phantom, right, this comes out. The Nightmare's going to be there on Terraria. Do you want to maybe turn this one around with the Fiends? But it looks like they're just waiting, just in case there is a jump in with the Storm Spirit as well, who would be able to interrupt that one. So Phantom doesn't overcommit with the ultimate. Melodule TPs himself back to base. So they lose one, they don't get anything from it. Uh, so that's a, that's a plus for Hydra, even the Skeletons in the mid lane. Doing a little bit of damage to this tier 1 tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wraith King is starting to become very relevant here. He can actually kill supports in a stun now, which is that? huge. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, again, you've got to look at, is it what you want to commit that the Fiends be upon, or there is going to be actually a big dive in, they're going to be able to find Phantom and the Nightmare comes up, but the drag back storm three, he needs to carry on going, get that Vortex back onto the Bane, but it looks like the back lines and Wraith King, he's actually going to go down, the Juggernaut does take him down, and have a change targets, ICQ, Wraith King is back up from that reincarnation, no blink for the seven seconds on the Slaughter. Couldn't close the gap there, and it's gonna be that's not gonna be as good for the Wraith King. Mm hmm. Really nice self nightmare. That was fast. Quick fingers on the bane. Pantom and Earth. He might even be able to find out a little bit more. He still holds that Fiend's Grip for Nightmares up as well, so the wards do go down. But what are they gonna be able to do with the smoke? Storm Spirit is gonna show. Kobolds. You can see the tether. So, what do they want to do? I mean, Bane's away from... Or well, the Force Staff comes through, there's going to be the Nightmare. Maybe looking for that Relocate save, and it is going to come through, it looks like, from the I.O., but the Fiends Group comes in. Storm Spirit, though, out of the frying pan, into the fire, it looks like. Mellow Jewel, as well as Smiling Knight, were close. And Askold, they're going to be waiting for this drag back, but they do have two heroes down here. ICQ as well. Oh, okay, Wraith King. He moves himself back through the Fiends Gate. And Koval, ICQ, just going to have two quick, nice exits. No, it was off! <laughs> just to rub it in the face, they're gonna have to use TPs to get out of here. Um, that Fiend's Gate, yeah, just wearing out before they can get the final completion on the uh, moving through. It looks like next item for Mello is going to be that straight Aghanims once again. Hmm. And. Yeah, the amount of damage that that pumps out. Would you even give the... Because the Roshan, we're going to see what the final time is going to be, but it, at a minimum, two seconds away here. If you get that, do you give the shot over to the Ember Spirit as well? Yeah, I'm pretty certain you do. Like, Recall is nice. AoE Brain Sap doesn't really do that much. And the Slider is, uh, shot is also nice, but it's not game-changing. Hmm. I suppose the uh, the Slithering Crush change with the Shard, it does go really well with the Aghanim Scepter, which the Slardar is going to be working towards as well. Just increasing the range of the um, the splash zone that you put down. Mm. So ICQ has himself a uh, Lotus Orb now, and he's working towards a Blink Dagger of himself. And what's going to be the benefit of the Lotus here in the specific match for the under, you know for the Underlord and the rest of the team? I mean, it just gets rid of a lot of annoying spells. Um, gets rid of corrosive haze. Gets rid of the 
Solo bind gets rid of searing chains. And then also it's an additional layer of protection against the Bane, for instance, and even the Omni Slash. Mm. Okay, well, Roshi is back up. They're going to move themselves over into this now as well. Melodule coming in. There was good the cross phase on the big man himself, and it looks like, again, Hydra, he just can't contest this. In fact, Pantomim, he TPs himself out of this. He's just going to leave two or three heroes, or three cores, from the side of one move to take Roshi on down. And Roshi, see who that shard does go to. Yeah, it is going to be going towards the Ember Spirit as the A just goes to the Juggernaut bottom lane. He's going to be able to find the Nightmare once again. Looking for that relocate out. It is available. The Fiendsgate comes in though. And it is going to be another Fiendsgate. But do we have enough to take him down the Storm Spirit? It will die now as well. Pantomime is going to survive through this. It looks like they are going to be the two. Koval on the back lines. Afterlife wants to come in. Can they do the damage? ICQ. Big tanky boy. But is that going to be enough to save him as the IO does go down? ICQ. He's trying. He's trying to get himself out of there. He won't be able to. Very nice fight by one move. You don't pay attention. And it's a 10k gold lead. I feel like uh, Ascolt uh, is just a little bit too reliant on his IO for saves. Mm. Yeah, you're probably gonna get out, but it's not guaranteed, and you could also just walk away earlier. Um, so, huge props to Pantomime as well for consistently getting these sleeps that make it so that Hydra has to make some really tough decisions. Yeah, it, and that's what. From the first time the, the sleep came out, like you say, there was the instant relocate out, and that was great for the Storm Spirit, but Pantomime knew that, and you could see him moving further and further away from the Storm Spirit while the rest of the team caught up, looking to get the, the, maybe the Fiends upon that IO to stop the relocate out. Crush from mm -hmm. Afterlife, just a little second too soon, and now the Wraith Pact is up as well, so that's going to be the damage reduction coming through. Who is it that actually has that? Oh, no, I'll take a look at the minute, because the Underlord is going to be able to get himself away from this one. The spin comes through, smile and night. It's going to be a tunnel stuff for ICQ. He might still go down the region coming through from Cobalt. It's still going to be up, and it's going to be the Juggernaut in the middle of four heroes, but the Aegis is still there. He's going to be kept alive for a little bit longer. He even gets off the, the Omni Slash. He just moves himself right back, and that is going to be the reincarnation for the Wraith King. So Rari, he does have that BKB, but... Hydra, they're having a real trouble repelling one move here. It just looks so strong. Man, I don't see a reason why they would stop here. Hmm? Still have three minutes of ages left and they have a 15k gold lead. Or it's gonna be smoke up maybe. There's gonna be the slight fist as well, so this mid lane will be opened up. At least the Underlord will be back in 10 seconds, but I don't think that's gonna be quick enough for this tier three tower in the mid lane. Oh, the crush comes in. Snapfire, though. Just moves back. Not an overcommitment from one move. Just reminding kicks that they're here in the base. Oh, it's going to be the dive in. Can they get a drive back? They're going to be able to go to the juggernaut. Can they take him down? No, he's going to be able to get the spin off. And he'll once again, Rari this time, he's going to be able to get himself away because he doesn't have that reincarnation. If he goes down, the bash is the cookie's going to keep him alive. Kogo is in a little bit of trouble as well. It looks like they move themselves back. Knight. Well, Rodobatos comes out onto Afterlife, but the four staff will be the ICQ. But they've got this healing mode. They're not really low on mana. The ultimate for pretty much everyone, apart from Juggernaut, comes back up or is up. And they can go right back in. Yeah, the spin. Again, Smile Knight's going to go into ICQ. ICQ, can he get himself away? It's going to be another cookie hop, but this time he will go down. And now Kick is going to be the target. And Juggernaut, do you want to go even further? It's going to be the Fiends coming out onto the Storm Spirit. As well, going to be locked down. The damage to the right clicks coming through from the Manta style as well. Rari, this time, won't have the reincarnation still. And this is just going to be GG being called. Look at this. 23 to 5 at 30 minutes. One move absolutely run over Hydra. Hydra completely dominant in game 1 and 3 yesterday up against Empire. And one move make them look amateur. Yeah. Just from the start, one move, they had this plan and they executed. Just a grand total of 5 kills for Hydra. Generally, when you lose, you at least have like some decent amount of kills like your mid maybe kills a few supports but this game it just felt hopeless so that is going to be game one so we're going to be taking a quick 10 minute break to see whether hydra if they can refine that form from yesterday or one move will they be going through qualifying for division one we'll find out guys after the break stick around because I guarantee it's still going to be from what we've seen today what we've seen yesterday of these two teams there's going to be some great dota coming up We'll see you in a few.